you will be targeted, you will be attacked, you are at risk for receiving violence, that's inherent. Fifth generation warfare is functionally the logical extension of warfare as propaganda. We are already far into World War III. But this war is unlike any other. We aren't fighting with guns and explosives. Rather, our minds. And everyone alive today is a soldier, including you, whether you like it or not, whether you know it or not. The consequences of this war are dire, and the outcome will impact generations for decades to come. Every day you face the battlefield. The only question is, who are we fighting? It looks pretty evil. I mean, to stare into the abyss and kind of see... And the abyss stares back at you, right? Now, I'm no war strategist, but it doesn't take an expert to know that to win a war, you have to know how to fight. But unlike previous wars, this is fifth generation warfare. So DJ and I contacted Dr. Robert Malone, who really is an expert, in an effort to understand the battlefield. Hey, Dr. Malone, can you hear us? Yes, hello, gentlemen. Hey, how are you? Hey, Dr. Malone, great to have you. He warned us that the battlefield is less damaging to the physical and more damaging to the spiritual. To battle on a fifth generation warfare battlescape, which by the way, is surreal. Once you get into this and you start dealing with it and engaging in the internet and other media sources, you become aware that it is an extremely convoluted, tortured landscape where it's difficult to perceive truth. And it's very difficult to maintain your integrity and any sense of ethics because it's a battlefield in which there's no distinction between combatants and civilians. So we all become combatants functionally. Okay, let's back up a little. If today we're on a fifth generational battlefield, what do first, second, third, and fourth generation battlefields look like? Well, first generation warfare is typically organized, run top down by someone in power, like a king. It involves swords, shields, bows, arrows, and other forms of rudimentary weaponry. And it's all fought on a physical battlefield. Second generation warfare is, well, a slight progression of firsts. A real world example of second gen warfare is the Civil War or World War I. More machinery and powerful weapons organized by that same structure of top-down leadership. In first and second gen warfare, the conflict is largely fought face to face with lines of troops waiting for their signal to march. But third generational warfare is a bit more nuanced. Third generation warfare can be thought of as the German innovation of the Blitzkrieg in World War II. The German army at the time of the initial Blitzkrieg actually was technically inferior to the French defenses. The French strategy was grounded in the experience of the First World War. And so it anticipated large troop movements, unified battle lines, uh, that type of thing. And the German innovation was to delegate authority down to local commanders to allow them to adapt to local battlefield situations. And so you had this much, much more dynamic command structure that was able to rapidly adapt to battlefield conditions as opposed to having to rely on communication back to central command and then central command giving orders back to the field. In third generation warfare, strategies and motives are beginning to evolve. You'll notice a common theme in the development of these war generations, the decentralization of leadership. You can see this particularly in fourth generation warfare. The Taliban and Al Qaeda are perfect examples. They have complete autonomy in terms of war tactics. Oh. The general strategy was kill Americans, and how you did it was up to you. Improvised explosive devices, 
that all kinds of strategies were deployed very effectively in an environment in which our intelligence and military communities couldn't readily identify who central leadership was to take it out. Fourth Gen Warfare also relies heavily on propaganda. This is where socio and psychological warfare comes into play, such as the exploitation of religion or fundamentalist beliefs, psyops. Military operations usually aimed at influencing the enemy's state of mind through non-combative means. As the world watches and listens in horror, the peaceful pro-democracy demonstration in China comes to a violent and bloody end. Mr. Gorbachev, tear down this wall. It's a recruitment video from a Fort Bragg brigade that grew out of the ghost army efforts during World War II. Wolves hiding nearby Whispering do or die These are the people that came up with the false flag red herring operation in Europe that distracted the Nazis from Normandy by use of broadcasted recorded sounds of of armored movements in German forests and inflatable tanks. Each of the major arms of the armed services has their own PSYOPs units. This is where we cross over into fifth generation warfare. And what about this internet thing? Do you, do you know anything about that? Sure. <laughs> what, what the hell is that exactly? Well, it's, it's become a place where people are publishing information. Right. So you, everybody can have their own homepage, companies are there, the latest information. It's wild what's going on. You can send electronic mail to people. Uh, it is the big new thing. Fifth generation warfare was formed alongside the rise of the internet, social media, entertainment, television, and news media. This type of war is not fought with the goal of capturing territory, rather capturing the minds and emotions of the population without them even knowing that they're being manipulated. This leads to the logic of the ends justify the means that we've seen deployed by our government throughout the COVID crisis. This is a pandemic of the unvaccinated. Twitter is a weapon, not a business. And I think Elon Musk is coming to terms with that. Whenever you open Twitter, Facebook, YouTube, Instagram, TikTok, you are stepping behind enemy lines. You're all being subjected to it, and so you might as well learn it. Retired U.S. Army Lieutenant General and former National Security Advisor Michael Flynn helped define what fifth generation warfare really is. And if anyone knows war strategy, it's him. He co-authored a book titled The Citizen's Guide to Fifth Generation Warfare. In it, he details how the flow of information through social media is manipulated and how cyber attacks are a more common threat than firearms. The goal is no longer to kill enemy soldiers, but to enslave enemy minds. He writes, For the first time in history, there is a global PSYOP agenda to consolidate power using digital platforms to affect everyone on macro and micro levels. Everyone is addicted to digital dopamine, and their next fix is just a click away. Despite being armed with a cell phone instead of a desert eagle, this war is gruesome, and our enemy is ruthless. The tree of liberty has to be watered by the blood of patriots. Mm -hmm. And tyrants. Well, yeah, by tyrants, but that we also must defend liberty at our own expense. So who are the tyrants? Who are the enemies we're fighting? 
the Five Eyes Alliance, Klaus Schwab, Silicon Valley. It's difficult to pin down who exactly is orchestrating this whole operation, which is exactly how they want it. But Dr. Malone has a pretty good guess. Here's my version. Imagine a Venn diagram with three intersecting circles, you have a common intersection. The upper circle is failure to think. There's not some, you know, a nefarious actor uh, with a mustache uh, scheming, uh, you know, or manipulating these things, but rather functionally, a lot of the people involved in uh, the operational aspect are basically unthinking bureaucrats that are trying to advance their career and do their job as they see it and not questioning the bigger picture of what they're actually engaged in. Second major one that intersects with all of this is nefarious scheming. A good example of this is Dr. Francis Collins, or Dr. Anthony Fauci, allegedly using burner phones to cover up critical medical information. Or Sam Bankman-Fried allegedly lying to FTX investors about where their money would go just to make a quick buck for himself. Without a doubt, we've all been affected by nefarious intent, collusion, and scheming, whether for power, control, or profit. The third large circle, I argue, is complex systems. If you didn't think things were complicated yet, buckle up we're seeing these complex systems develop right now. One of which is the manipulation and political bias of artificial intelligence, a relatively new player in the game, but without some kind of course correction could end up being very dangerous. But it doesn't stop there. These systems include geopolitics, big business, and banking. The game is incredibly complex, with even more convoluted players, like BlackRock or Vanguard. Massive businesses with seemingly unstoppable power. Let's step into the courtroom for a second. Dominion Voting Systems recently sued Fox News over defamation, and they reached a $787 million settlement. But there's an important piece of this puzzle that you probably don't know. Oh, it sounds like two very large corporations fighting. Both of them have about 20 or to 30% ownership by BlackRock. Oh, it's BlackRock suing BlackRock. <laughs> um, so, so you really got to wonder, is this all just kabuki theater? Is this all just fifth generation warfare? And, and the press repackages it and feeds it to us or jams it down our throat. The sharing of biased and false, false news has, has become, become all too common, common on, on social, social media. media. More alarming, some media outlets publish the same stories simply aren't true without checking facts first. Unfortunately, some members of the media use their platforms to push their own personal bias and agenda to control exactly what people think. And this is extremely dangerous to our democracy. Okay. So yeah, complex is putting it lightly. The systems are endless, ranging from political operations to the school system to geopolitics. These complex systems don't run themselves, however. Big players like BlackRock are building them and upholding them. And these systems have unintended consequences. The intersection of nefarious scheming and failure to think is another big area of unintended consequences or blowback at the intersection of complex systems and the world of failure to think. You have what I argue is overbearing arbitrary bureaucracy. Bureaucrats don't really think about what they're doing. Dr. Malone describes these people as making decisions without truly understanding the impact those decisions will have on the world around them. An unfortunate reality of a lot of American politics today. Politicians are constantly accused, often rightfully so, of acting only in their best interest, rarely thinking through the long-term complications of their decisions. The intersection of nefarious scheming and complex systems, I argue, is called corruption. The corrupting influence of the various nefarious schemers, which includes pharma, the overlords in a sense of these complex systems, which, you know, involves governmental and large non-governmental or transnational bodies. So who or what is at the center of this diagram? What exactly are we fighting in fifth generation warfare? At the core of all of which 
is the banality of evil. Absolutely, we have seen evil. We have seen the face of evil. Whether you want to ascribe it to Lucifer or a secret society or pick your choice, evil is evil. And I think of most of us with our eyes open have perceived it. And most of us have felt the chilling effect of its icy fingers on our lives. The banality of evil is a pretty intense opponent to go up against, but nobody said winning a war was going to be easy. The strategies that our opponent utilizes are extremely destructive. They want us divided. There's a whole lot of strategies used by agents of chaos or disruptors. For instance, infiltrate a movement and often ally themselves with a high profile leader and then work to undermine it within using things like bad jacketing, which is the accusation that others are controlled opposition or somehow working for the enemy. And these are usually deployed by people who either are actual controlled opposition or have been recruited in some way, even without their knowledge, to support uh, agendas from controlled opposition. You fundamentally can't trust anybody, not even me. Unless, of course, you opt out. The only way to win in fifth generation warfare is not to play. Lieutenant General Flynn agrees. He advised us to hang out with your friends and family and purposely do the same with new people you meet. There is power in numbers and camaraderie. Victory is possible if we recognize the psychological landmines ahead of time build new institutions unaffected by the world's intelligence, and help our fellow foot soldiers wake up. You can choose to be a warrior or be a victim. It's your choice. I also think we have an obligation to help people wake up. We have to do it gently because doing it with hate in our hearts will absolutely guarantee that we will fail. Thanks for watching. If you liked that video, be sure to subscribe and hit the notification bell so you never miss another upload. If you wish to support the channel, feel free to donate below. The link is in the description.